when we come to the Lord's table. We try to confine our comments or what we have to say about the table to those things that Jesus had to say. Now the gospel, what I mean is we don't come up and preach necessarily the gospel of Jesus Christ at this time. The gospel is a very big thing. And there's much to be said about the gospel of Jesus Christ because Jesus did a lot of things. And, and we would just take just one aspect. We can't exhaust just one aspect of what Jesus did, like he took sins away. So, but at the Lord's table, though, we, we define our focus and, and, we, and we comment on those things that Jesus highlighted for us at the table that was given to us by the disciples. They were there, and they communicated those things that Jesus had. To, those are the things that we want to focus. Those are the important things that Jesus gave us to see at the Lord's table. Um, I want to again think about the Lord's body at the table. And uh, I, I, I have done this on occasions, but this thing still, well, not this thing, but this, this idea this, about the Lord's body at the table, um, it's really provoking. And I revisited uh, the Lord's table through the MP3s, and I picked up on some things that Brother given. And, and this about the Lord's body, this is a very, a very intriguing thing. Jesus said um, at the at the table, he told he asked he told the disciples, he said, "Take eat, this is my body." And uh, you know, uh, we're talking about the body of Jesus Christ. Now, this is a this is a focal point, a focus on Scripture. Uh, it says in Scripture, Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body thou hast prepared me. Now, this was in, uh, taken from Hebrews 10.5. And, uh, and, of course, the apostle takes this from the 40th Psalm. And, and this is not exactly what David said there in the 40th, uh, 40th uh, Psalm, uh, verses 5 and 6. Let me read them for you uh, very quickly. Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire, mine ears hast thou opened, burnt offering and sin offering thou hast not required. Now, this is what the apostle Paul said. And so, now, David said, mine ears hast thou opened, but Paul is able to make commentary. So he goes back to the scripture and actually, uh, and he actually translates for us. He actually translates what David was saying there. And uh, Paul can do this, see? Paul can function in this, in this aspect, in this uh, uh, way, because he's an apostle of Jesus Christ. He is able to be a prophet because he understands the redemption in Jesus Christ and the purpose of God. So he can, he can tell us what David... Who, I don't know why scholars are having a big time about who David was talking about there. They obviously don't understand Paul or receive Paul as an apostle. Paul goes back and he tells us. Who, who David was talking, of course, we, uh, we, we received this, but there's a big old debate about this still, you know. But anyway, this is our Lord he's talking about, and he's talking about the body that's been prepared for him. Yeah. And uh, uh, the, necessi the necessity of the body of Christ and redemption. See, now Paul was able to, to, to do this because he saw so much in this body that God prepared for him. Uh, a body thou hast prepared for me. It, uh, and this, with the emphasis, we read this with an emphasis on a body. A body thou hast prepared for me. All the things the Father had prepared for the Son, that he prepares him a body. Okay? The body of Jesus Christ. And this is going to be what, this is going to be everything that God wanted to do. The reconciliation and all these things that's going to be done in this body. God prepared a body for Jesus. Amen. Now, we rely on Paul, uh, who put so many things together. He spoke a great deal about the body, Christ's body. So a body was given to Jesus for sacrifice. God, prepared, uh, The Father prepared it for him. That, uh, that was the body that was nailed to a cross, prepared for this. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Now, this is the only time this was told to us. Luke records it in this way, a slightly different way. He said, he records that this is my body, which is given for you. But, but in these both accounts, then we get the idea what, what was trying to be said here. And, and the, from the, this body that was broken for you and this body that was given for you. This is enough to give us the idea of what was going on here. The body that the Father has prepared for him. 
This is, of course, Jesus' body. It's not an ordinary body. It's a, it's a special body, especially prepared for him. Uh, it's true, and in a way you can say that God has created all men a body to live in. But, they, but do you didn't get a body like Jesus Christ got. Right. Jesus Christ got a body that would be free for sin. It was sinless body. He would not have a body like we got from Adam. Okay, It was corrupt and defiled by nature. It is a body that uh, would be used exclusively to bring salvation to the world, to reconcile men to God. For those who would come to him, you see, he would, in this body, uh, he would remove sin, he would defeat the enemy, and he would reconcile men to God as a body that was given to him. Now, this body, Jesus turns around and he gives it uh, to the world. And uh, as this body would be, a, it would profit them, would profit those uh, who would come to him. This body was given for us to take transgression away. The saints will partake of this body, Jesus said. Take eat, this is my body. Paul will go on to develop this idea about the body of Christ in many different ways. He saw so much, and there's much to see here. He will, he will say that we've been joined to the Lord, okay? Both in the likeness of his death and our baptism, and in the likeness of our resurrection when we were raised in newness of life. We're joined to him in his death. This is our dying. We're joined to him in his resurrection. This is our life that he gives us. We're, we're joined to the body in, in both these senses in a way. It's, this is something that God does, and it, it all has to do with the body of Christ that was prepared for him. And he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. And this is how we proceed into the kingdom of God with this understanding. Now, in, in the sixth chapter of John, because the multitudes were so dull in their regard to Jesus as to Christ, Je Jesus actually speaks to them pretty plainly. And he just he speaks bluntly in verse thirty three for the bread, for for the bread of God is which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world he tells them and then there's some more discourse between him and the, those who speak in the crowd and then later on in verse forty eight and fifty one he he just says I am that bread of life I am the living bread which came down from heaven if any man eat of this bread he shall live forever and the bread that I will give is my flesh which I will give for the life of the world. And if, the, if you remember this, the, the, uh, they, they, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? And a lot of them left. But Jesus answered to them before they left, with, My flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. Now, you know, I thought this for a long time, and I, I'm not so sure that it's the proper way to think. I thought for a long time that Jesus spoke to them frankly and bluntly in this way. Uh, so they wouldn't understand. So that he would that he hid the truth from them in this way. But you know, Jesus did this in parables. Now he admitted. He said, "I speak to I speak to the people and the multitudes. I speak to them in parables. But to you, I don't speak speaking to the time. I don't speak this way." Jesus wasn't speaking to them in a parable here. Jesus was just telling them the flat out truth about it. He was. Uh, he always told the truth. Jesus was telling the truth here. My. My flesh is food indeed. And uh, Jesus said unto them, he told the crowds, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. And that's exactly what Jesus meant. They couldn't receive it. Paul in Corinthians ten sixteen said, Is it not the communion of the body of Christ? The cup of blessing which we bless. Is it not the communion of the, the blood of Christ? The bread which we break? Is it not the communion of the body of Christ? This is in the 10th chapter. It was an early reference to the Lord's Supper. He would, lay, he would later go into it and, and uh, open it up completely in the next chapter. He says, and when he, he begins with them and, uh, and their, their abuses at the table, he said, I certainly praise you not. I don't have anything good to say to you at all about, about this. And uh, Paul goes on to to address this matter of abuse at the table. And uh, it was the abuse of the entire gathering. And, and it wasn't necessarily the way they preached that he directed his attention to, or the way they, their song and, uh, and worship service wasn't what he, they were abusive at. What was abusive 
to Paul was the way they conducted themselves at the Lord's table. And I want to I want to show you it was all it had to do about their disregard for the body of Jesus. And um, it was their ill treatment and their misuse of the Lord's body at this table. Now, we have come to associate life with Jesus Christ and that we are made alive by the resurrection of His life. And we believe that we, our sustenance to maintain this life comes from Him. And it's found right here at this table, you see. Paul tells them there in Corinthians, he continues to, to talk to them and try to reason with them. Paul tells them that they, they had failed to rightly consider the body of Christ. They had dr drank and eat and not discerning the Lord's body. They didn't consider this was the Lord's body. Partaking of the Lord's table without perceiving it was the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you and many sleep. Now, Paul tells the, br the brethren right there that God has brought judgment on them because they had not discerned the Lord's body, the, the, the body that the Father had prepared for him, you see. Mm -hmm. um, this truth has slipped away from us. We, we were able to revisit this uh, in our uh, lessons we had on the Lord's table, but uh, this, is not, this is not known that, this, that we partake of the Lord's table body here and we do it by faith brethren I understand um, we want to take heed to the word of Paul Paul said that uh, if we would judge ourselves we should not be judged and there's a reason that God had uh, visited the congregation there with sickness and, and uh, death and all kind of uh, some kind of outbreak there among the congregation it's because God didn't want to be condemned with the rest of the world Paul, yes. Paul says this, that we should not be condemned with the world. That's, that's why God was doing this. So we, uh, so we want to take heed that as we come to this table, brother, that we're actually partaking of the, the Lord's body and we are, are being ministered to Him in this way. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we, we thank You for this provision that You've given us. And Father, we pray that You would... Um, Give us grace to uh, fully understand and to receive these, these things. Father, we pray that you would uh, guide our thinking and our concentration, that would we uh, consider uh, the Lord's body and that uh, the provision that you've given us in this way. Father, we are thankful, and we're always thankful for all these things you give us, Lord. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.